Hi there, it's Connor and welcome to my channel, The Way Within. In this video, I want to talk about one of the chapters in this book, Return to the Brain of Eden. And specifically, I want to talk about the chapter that covers human sexuality and its relation to a high fruit diet. So if you haven't seen my previous videos on this book, basically what it's about, in essence, is human evolution and it puts forth the idea or the hypothesis that humans evolved in the rainforests of Africa and not primarily on the savanna as we have kind of been led to believe and secondly that in the rainforest humans consumed a diet largely composed of fruit uh, with some other plant materials like let's say uh, leaves, shoots, roots, that kind of thing, maybe the occasional few insects, uh, very much like the chimps, the chimpanzees and the bonobos eat today. And they're also located in the rainforest of Africa, you know, Congo, places like that. And um, even today, the bonobos especially, they eat a very fruit rich diet. The chimps too, uh, they can be known to scavenge some smaller animals on occasion. But even the chimps, their diet consists of 70% and above fruit, uh, provided that it's readily available. <clears throat> so yeah, the book is very interesting. It's I'm still reading it, like, but it's one of my favorite books that I've ever read so far. You know, like it's just blown my mind on so many different levels, so many different topics, and it's like giving me a lot of answers that I was looking for for a while, and it connected a lot of dots for me as well. It strengthened other ideas and theories that I had about human evolution, human diet, all of that kind of thing. Um, so in this video, like I said, I just want to focus specifically on the chapter around sexuality, human sexuality, uh, and how that ties in with a high fruit diet. So in the book, uh, it draws a comparison basically between our sexuality in the past, in this hypothesized past when we were living in the jungle, eating loads of fruit, and what it was like then, how we performed, you know, uh, our biology then, how our body worked in relation to sexuality, and comparing that to today, and our sexuality today, and our performance with that, and how it contrasts with the past, and how in their view it's, it's a, it's a kind of a, a shadow of its former self, you know, like our sexual capacities are really uh, not what they used to be, you know. So there's a couple of areas that it covers. There's the female orgasm, there's the male orgasm, there's the menstrual cycle of women, so menstruation and the period and ovulation. Uh, there's also menopause. Um, it also talks about things like hair loss in men uh, and interestingly uh, psychopathy um, and how that all ties in with our our system basically a system out of balance you know and the system that's not getting uh, the nourishment that it that it evolved to obtain from a high fruit diet over millions of years and basically the stresses and the uh, the inadequacies of our, of our modern lifestyle and how that impacts us in so many different ways. Um, so yeah, just focusing back on sexuality, um, the basic underlying premise is that fruit, um, they're like the sex organs of plants, you know, they're, uh, they're one of the best things that plants produce, you know, they're loaded in nutrition, they have a, each one has a cocktail of chemicals that has uh, kind of a symbiotic relationship with the human mind, you know, it developed over millions of years uh, humans and plants via fruit basically developed a symbiotic mutualistic relationship whereby the fruit would nourish humans and it was in its best interest to be as nourishing and nutritious as possible so that humans would be more enticed to pick it and in turn, the humans then spread, dispersed the seeds, you know, took care of the plants, um, uh, yeah, just dispersed them and uh, aided their success as well, you know. 
But the thing about fruit and the biochemical cocktail I mentioned is that it's loaded, like fruits are loaded in compounds that suppress steroidal activity in the human body. So things like flavonoids, beta carbolines, um, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, uh, other compounds as well. And they also contain neurotransmitter precursors, um, you know, things that can be things that have a similar function to let's say serotonin which causes you know happiness and and, and things like that in the human body and things like dopamine and uh, you know tryptophan and kind of also melatonin like so basically the, the the fruits they have compounds that suppress steroid activity in the body and they also have compounds that uh, aid the functioning of the nervous system and the, the human human consciousness basically and um, but regarding steroids um, they basically they one of their functions is they bring on the onset of puberty and with puberty uh, the, the development of the brain slows down so with this inhibition from steroid inhibiting compounds in the fruit and these being consumed generation after generation and it having an epigenetic effect over time, it led to a delay in the onset of puberty, which led to an increase in the time for brain development. And that's the hypothesis for uh, the rapid brain growth ex experienced by humans put forward in the book. Um, and then of course steroids, they're, you know, tying in with puberty and, you know, ties in with sexuality as well, sexual maturation. Um, the dampening down of those steroids, their activity, first of all, it delayed puberty. But when you take, for example, the uh, the, fem the the menstrual cycle of women, uh, which is today seen as like a monthly cycle, you know, uh, every, like, let's say 28 days or so, a woman... Uh, will release an egg and then the, the the uterine wall will build up and then it will uh, break down again and uh, that whole cycle comes with a lot of uh, challenges I suppose like emotional challenges you know it leads to like mood swings uh, it can even lead to pain I believe like for some women it can be painful uh, so there's a lot of it's, I suppose it's a very inconvenient thing you know and we kind of take that as natural it's it's just another one of these things in society where it's like oh you know that's the way it is that's how that's how our bodies are, are meant to function but they put forth in the book a really solid hypothesis in my view for why it's not actually that normal it's actually a symptom of our <clears throat> of our way of life being out of alignment with our actual biology and we're kind of living this subpar lifestyle that's not actually conducive to our bodies operating at the highest level they can and so what they do there to show that is they compare it to the past uh, hypothetically when humans were in the jungle eating loads of fruits and there was loads of steroid inhibition happening and that of course would also inhibit the, the steroids involved in and responsible for menstruation so we're talking about estrogen um, estra, estradiol luteinizing hormone, uh, follicle stimulating hormone, all of these kind of hormones that are involved in the process, but estrogen especially, um, <clears throat> the consumption, the high consumption of fruit, like the state, those being the staple of the diet, that would inhibit their activity or at least very much reduce it. And what this did essentially, in essence, was it, it caused the, uh, the menstrual cycle to reach like a stasis at about day 11, so just before the ovum gets released, uh, that's kind of the stage it would be held at. Uh, the if one way to look at it is like the hormones would be held in balance, like none of them would get too too high or estrogen, you know, it wouldn't stimulate the whole process. It would be kept at a, a quite a minimal level, which would keep the uterine wall like not not getting too built up, and it would prevent the release of the ovum. Uh, so that meant, in essence, when we were eating this high fruit diet, the menstrual cycle was practically non-existent. You know, the, 
the egg was held in suspension um, and uh, yeah so just one aside before I get into the next point carotene especially which is found in carrots and other vegetables as well that's actually shown to stop menstruation altogether um, so the, the, the steroid inhibition of the fruits would slow it down and then there were certain compounds, carotene being just one, that would actually have a role in completely stopping the cycle and then the egg would just be, uh, would, wouldn't be released every month. Um, yeah, there's two, there's two paths, there's two things I want to explain there. So like the first is, uh, so the, the second thing I'll explain later is the menopause and how that ties in with the egg not being released or it being released in modern day times with the monthly cycle and how that causes that. But firstly, before I get into that, I want to talk about uh, a problem that that brought back, you know, hundreds of thousands or, or millions of years ago. So if the egg wasn't being released every month, um, you know, like the current idea today is like, oh, the egg is, is released every month. You've kind of got to time it. Um, and, you know, hopefully uh, it'll work out. You'll have a, you'll have a baby. Uh, so that seems like a very inefficient reproductive system, you know. Like most mammals, most animals, when they copulate, you know, that's pretty much it. There's like a 90 plus percent chance of, of conception. Whereas with humans, it's something like five percent. You know, like you have to you have to time it, and even then, it's not necessarily uh, guaranteed. So, it seems like a very inefficient system, and you'd have to wonder why. Um, the idea they put forth in the book is that before humans even got to the stage of the the rainforest and you know consuming high levels of fruit, they were just like any other animal. They would mate, and it would be pretty much a done deal. You know, but when they went through this lengthy phase like even millions of years of eating fruit in the forest having this massive steroid inhibition effect generation after generation it led to like i said the steroids being uh, their activity being reduced which led to that you know the that effect of the menstruation cycle not being there the egg was held uh, not even in suspense but it just wasn't released um, and there wasn't a build-up in the, the uterine wall um, and so basically that led to a problem like evolutionarily speaking that there was it was much harder to conceive and what they put forth in the book is that a kind of a physiological or psychological uh, program arose evolutionarily which was essentially orgasm now I'm not really familiar with the science on like animals like what they experience when they have sex or if they have a strong orgasm but what they put forth in the book basically is that the human orgasm evolved as a result of uh, the cessation in a regular uh, cycle due to fruit um, so conception was becoming harder because um, yeah, there wasn't that regular release of, of the egg. The, you know, things were held in suspension. And so the idea was like, you know, as in men, like when men have an orgasm, when they ejaculate, they release sperm, their side of the bargain. With women, it said that in this ideal time, when they were, you know, when we were living in the rainforest, when we were eating loads of fruit, uh, when we had this like higher state of consciousness, when the brain was working more coherently, the left and the right side, um, the orgasm developed and it became a very strong thing. And back then it says that sex would have been a more prolonged process, which I found really interesting because if you look at the first video I uploaded on my channel, it's about a practice called Karetza. And what that is basically is, is like modern practice of prolonged sex where the focus is taken off orgasm and uh, basically it, it bypasses like the, uh, 
mating mechanism in the mind and switches over to a more love-based bonding mechanism. Um, so it's a very powerful practice, but I just saw parallels between Caretza and what they were describing in the book. So they were saying like back in the day, millions of years ago in the rainforest, uh, sex probably would have been a more lengthy thing, you know, um, because the, the woman's orgasm became coupled with the release of the egg. That's the key point. So the idea is when when female sexuality was in its, uh, you know, when in its prime, uh, I suppose, you know, for when they had the right diet, when we were living in the right environment, had the right consciousness, the female uh, orgasm was linked to ovulation. So the egg was actually released at the point of, of orgasm. And uh, this would have coincided then with the male orgasm as well, more or less. And that's basically how conception occurred. And um, yeah, they even put in some anecdotes to kind of illustrate that point in the book of like there was one woman who had a very prolonged um, uh, intercourse with a man even when she was uh, when it wasn't I suppose a time of the month you know and she apparently became pregnant from that over like a it was a very prolonged intercourse and um, she had like multiple orgasms and then uh, that she got pregnant from that so apparently that was like they were saying that's kind of how it was more back in the day you know it was like about prolonged um, sex and multiple orgasms and then uh, the ovulation was actually tied in with the orgasm it wasn't just a monthly thing that you had to try and get at the right time so yeah very like wild stuff you know um, so that is one point uh, yeah, and so the other thing I wanted to mention before I get into the whole menopause thing was like what you have to consider as well is like on a fruit based diet because of that dampening down of the steroids it also has an effect on men on male sexuality and what it does in men is it actually leads to a lower libido by our standards but potentially it's actually just a more natural libido it's possible that in modern society the male libido is actually like out of control it's like way too high um, firstly because we're not really consuming that high fruit based diet that inhibits steroidal activity brings it down to perhaps its natural range um, considering our symbiotic relationship with plants that evolved over millions of years but secondly we're also eating a lot of meat and animal products in modern society and they come with their own endogenous hormones like estrogen, testosterone, corticosteroids, cortisol, adrenaline, uh, norepinephrine, things like that you know so um, they actually boost libido in men even further so you have like this double whammy and I think really that's where modern male sexuality stems from, you know, where guys are like obsessed with orgasm, guys are obsessed with finishing, there's like this need to uh, ejaculate, you know, and I know that because I've dealt with it myself, and I'm actually doing a practice called NoFap, which is about abstinence from pornography, masturbation, and ejaculation in order just to cultivate the sexual energy and to, uh, I suppose, have more energy at your disposal and to use for other pursuits, you know, and to actually gain more confidence, you know, be more uh, proactive and, um, yeah, all of that good stuff, you know. And the reason I did that was because I was, like, addicted to pornography, you know, and I was wasting a lot of my energy through that and I had enough, you know. But, yeah, I'm getting off topic there. What I wanted to say was just, like, I think modern male sexuality is warped compared to what it's meant to be and on this high fruit diet it said that male libido is brought back into a proper balance you know and it's less about orgasm it's less about finishing the ejaculation and it's more about like this kind of slow uh, sensuality you know it's like about just being more present with the woman you know like enjoying the sensuality of it and not really focusing too much on the end you know on, on the finishing um and i think there's so many like avenues to explore there like i think we don't even know what half of it i think it's possible for men to probably even have like multiple orgasms by themselves it's also possible i reckon to separate orgasm and ejaculation 
Um, and then there's things like Carezza, which is just you don't orgasm at all, but it still sounds great. Um, it's just about the sensuality. Um, so yeah, like it affects, what I wanted to say is it like this high fruit diet, this steroid inhibition, it affects female sexuality, it affects male sexuality. And it's not so much like it's this thing we can try and it affects us. I think it's like our natural diet and it's like the way we're meant to be. And we've lost our connection to that diet. So we've lost our connection to our deepest sexuality. And I think people can intuitively feel that there's like something missing in their sexuality. There's like a cravingness there. They want more and more and more. And since they don't know how to get to that depth through proper diet, through proper practices, instead they go try to go wide and they develop all kinds of fantasies and obsessions and they want more and more and more. They want different types of people. They want different experiences, you know. And they'll never find it. They'll never find what they're looking for through that search, you know. It'll always be empty. And um, I think the solution is to go for the debt instead. So what is the rep what is the diet that's going to be most conducive to our sexuality, you know? And it might not always be the easiest question to ask and you might not always get the easiest answers, but I mean it really depends like what do you want in life? Do you want, you know, things you're used to, do you want the things you've grown up with, do you want the things you find pleasurable, or do you want to search for what's true, you know, do you want to look at, like, the reality, what's possible, you know, human biology, how that intersects with diet, you know, and, um, yeah, for me, like, I just really think it's about, you know, a diet high in fruit, I think that's what we evolved for in the rainforest of Africa over millions of years, in a diet rich in fruit all throughout the year, um, I think as well, like we we project the scarcity of our current society onto the past. So, like we live in a very like monetized, transactional society where you have to like fight to survive, you know, basically. And we then project that onto the past and think, oh, life was uh, short and brutish, and like it was a struggle for survival, you know. When I think really that's the furthest thing from the truth you could imagine I think life was very abundant back then uh, we lived in relative ease you know we lived in a very lush warm stable environment uh, very natural environment you know surrounded by diversity of life and beauty that you couldn't even begin to imagine and just like having all kinds of fruits at your disposal just picking lounging enjoying life communal singing art, dance, you know, love, uh, creativity, you know, just amazing stuff like that. And I think we've really gone off course. I think this book has a lot of the, a lot of the picture in it, you know, as to what's missing and how we can go about restoring that just through some simple lifestyle changes. And when that's done collectively, I think that's really what's gonna uh, shift things around. So that's male and female sexuality, but I also just wanted to mention about the menopause as well, as like another point. So as I was mentioning earlier, like when you have this steroid inhibition from all the compounds in the fruit, it really modulates um, the menstrual cycle and basically the period ceases completely. Uh, and women don't have to deal with the effects of that. And it doesn't affect fertility whatsoever. You know, there's a kind of a worry today. That, oh, if a woman doesn't have her period, something's radically wrong. That might be the case today. It could be stemming from other issues, but coming from this, you know, the high fruit diet, uh, based on the things like carotene, you know, all those kind of compounds, and also the steroid inhibition, it's kind of a natural thing that arises from that, that women's period like very much slows down or else it disappears. Um, and then the egg is released um, with the female orgasm. But what you have to understand is if we're going to get to this ideal state of being, we have to fix multiple pieces of the puzzle. Um, that's the problem I see is like people might find one piece of the puzzle and then like let's say for example a woman will say okay I mean I eat, if I eat a high fruit diet then my period will stop and what about ovulation then, you know, like you said, like if it's if it's linked with orgasm, you know, like a lot of women, they struggle with orgasm. 
Um, but like I say, we have to look at multiple pieces of the puzzle and like multiple ways in which like things aren't at an optimal state right now. I think, uh, like, who's to say I'm just putting out ideas here, but like there could be any reason for the, the difficulty with orgasm, but it could be, you know, like, it could be emotional, it could be traumatic, you know, like living in this society, it could be diet, it could be just that men and women, we don't really have a proper grasp on like the full potential of our sexuality and like, you know, the proper practices, you know, like things like Kretza, uh, things like Tantra, you know. Um, and I think we have to bring all these pieces of the puzzle together and then it starts to make sense, you know, like then uh, when women can like achieve like multiple orgasms and their ovulation is linked with that, you know, and and they don't have the period any longer, they don't have to deal with that, they're eating like a high fruit diet, their consciousness changes, you know, the, the left and right brains are more connected, you know, the right brain is like more powerful then as well, which I'd imagine it has more of a, a link to the whole orgasmic thing and, and sexuality, that seems like it would be the domain of the right hemisphere. So there's just a lot there. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that, you know, like just because you get one piece of the puzzle and it makes sense, don't deny, don't like denigrate that piece because there may be other pieces missing, you know, or because the current pieces you have might contradict that. You have to like look and, and examine and see other things that can tie in together and eventually it just becomes one big connected picture of how it all makes sense. I think this book does a lot for that, you know, like it just just puts together so many pieces of the puzzle. Uh, like human evolution, diet, you know, consciousness, the function of the brain, you know, neurochemistry, everything. But one other point I wanted to make anyway was the menopause. So like if we're going to go with this idea that the fruit diet, the cereal inhibition, that slowed down or stopped the periods, and the ovulation, and the ovulation was linked with orgasm, then based on that, the the woman's eggs aren't being spent and discarded every month. So as a result, the menopause, it's said to disappear on this high fruit diet. Um, and the menopause comes with its own issues, you know, like it becomes comes with hormonal changes um, I, I, apparently women become a little bit more masculine when it happens and because of the the changes I suppose testosterone um, and yeah the idea is that the menopause stops and the other thing as well is that the time between uh, conceptions or, or childbirths also uh, slows down. It's, it's known in chimps, for example, chimpanzees, that uh, there's about seven years between each conception or each birth. And um, I think breastfeeding plays a role in that as well. Like when the, uh, w even with a with a human mother, when she breastfeeds, um, it really, I've heard it really like dampens down her fertility for like a year year or so you know um but i think with whatever it is with the changes from the fruit diet and the hormone inhibition that even it goes even longer so it goes up to like you know three four five years and with chimps it's around seven so there's a lot of changes that happen um i just think there's like so much about human sexuality that we that we have to uncover or that has to go mainstream at least and this book covers a lot about it um, yeah I just think we have like a shadow or a remnant of our sexuality like I think sex should be yeah like sex could be something much more prolonged much more profound, much more spiritual, uh, much more enjoyable. I think women don't actually need to uh, suffer from periods. I think that's like just a symptom of our modern lifestyle and diet. 
when I say modern, I mean like the last 10 to 30,000 years. Um, and yeah, I think ovulation is meant to be coupled with orgasm. Um, like, honestly, I think there's levels to this that like we can hardly even imagine. I think there's like, there's power even in the human mind. And I think we could like, for me, the first wave is gonna be making this knowledge mainstream. It's going to be about Coretza, it's going to be about high fruit diets, it's going to be about, you know, that steroid inhibition restoring our former consciousness, our connectedness, the coherence of the left and right hemisphere. But beyond that, I think there's even other levels we can get to where, like, we can control conception even through the power of our mind, you know. I've, like, even heard people authors you know writing and surmising about that like the idea that a woman could actually decide when she conceives she could des decide when she becomes pregnant and she could decide when she has a child so i think that's very interesting i know that's more out there but i just wanted to throw that in as well but yeah mainly i just wanted to talk about that human sexuality is way more than we think it is and there's so many mechanisms that scientists are discovering about the orgasm and about higher faculties within that. And as the book so, so properly says, it's not like those mechanisms are just waiting there to be discovered by Western scientists. They're there for a reason. And why are they atrophied? Why don't we have proper access to these higher faculties that we intuit are there? It's because we're not living the right lifestyle. We don't have the right diet that's most optimal and that we evolved for. And we're suffering consequences as a result of that. One being a drastically reduced um, sexuality, sexual experience, and um, yeah, all that comes with that. So I highly recommend you check out the book. And that's just one chapter. The rest talks about loads more, you know, like spirituality, our consciousness, how the left and right hemisphere interact, how with, a, uh, how with the fall, as they call it, when we stopped eating fruit and had to move on to the savanna, the left brain was more affected by the high levels of hormones and it came to become dysfunctional and it came to dominate the right hand side. And that's where we lost that mystical uh, connected aspect of ourselves, you know, and over the tens of thousands of years, it became more and more subdued so at the time of let's say the greeks the ancient greeks and the egyptians they were they had you know the oracles they had the divine uh, poets who could actually who could actually channel um the, you know the words of god the words of the universe through them and over time like even that was lost people as the dominance took hold they completely lost touch to that the divine aspect you know that divine presence or nature and then it just became you know a case of mim mimicry you know people writing poetry themselves mimicking uh, the poetry of the divine I suppose and you know it went from there so yeah that's it you know I won't go on any further hope you enjoyed that video I hope it was insightful for you um, I noticed my videos they tend to be on the longer side you know like 20-30 minutes I'll see if I can produce some shorter bite-sized ones as well, but I'm sure there's people with the attention span for it who were able to watch through and you know thanks for watching, I hope you got value and uh, if you like this give it a like, comment below if you have any questions or thoughts um, and subscribe to the channel as well because I'll be uploading here very regularly and I intend to go very far with this channel, you know, I want to build up a proper following share my ideas, uh, collaborate with people, help people, you know, and yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.